what I would like to do in this presentation is to actually take us back to the roots of organic farming and what it is that we're really trying to deliver. And I think one of the fundamental ideas for me of the organic farming concept originally has been this idea of the farm as an organism or as a system with multiple goals, sustainable, sustainability, quality, health, social goals, with multiple components that interact synergistically, operating where possible in closed cycles, and relying on biological ecosystems and processes. You'll note that I haven't mentioned the non-use of chemicals there, because for me, the non-use of chemicals is a side effect. It's not the fundamental idea that um, organic is about. And that's what's really interesting for me about organic, is this diverse range of people that have contributed to the ideas. It may not, for scientists, be scientific all the time, but that's because it's not only scientists that have contributed to the development of their ideas. It's an open source concept, owned by everyone, not owned by corporations, institutions, or governments. And it's closely linked with a range of other movements, so soil conservation, animal welfare, environmental protection, social justice, uh, and agroecology. And the emphasis has changed over time as these movements have also uh, gained and, and to some extent lost also emphasis in, in social debate. But it's a very diverse background that we're trying to cater for when we think about the regulation. This just summarises some of the multiple aspirations that we're trying to work towards. And of course, dealing with these different goals and objectives also means that we have conflicts, potentially, and trade-offs between some of them. We have to think, how do we balance those different interests? And then you think about what role does regulation play within that process? Well, firstly, there was an early recognition already in the 1930s to 1950s with the introduction of the uh, Demeter standards, for example, that producers, producers who are attempting to make fundamental changes swimming against the, the, or the stream or against the tide, they're going to need support from fellow citizens in doing that, making those changes. In the absence of direct government support, which really only came uh, in the late 1980s, early 1990s, specialist markets were a major way in which those producers were able to engage with the citizens who wanted to support them. Um, the biodynamic farmers were clearly pioneers in that process, um, but during the 1970s and onwards, markets developed in connection with organic farming uh, as a means to an end supporting the process of change. But they weren't the central focus of why people were organic. Um, and I think that is still a really important issue. The market now is so dominant uh, and almost for some people an end in itself, whereas it really is a support mechanism to help a process of transforming agriculture. As markets grew, consumers and genuine producers, bona fide producers needed protection. Private certification schemes were developed, um, and there are some of them well represented here today. And the continued growth of the organic market led to the introduction of national and then EU regulations in the, in the late um, 1980s and early 1990s. So that's quite a long period of development of the organic movement um, from the early part of the 20th century through to the time when regulation started to come in. Regulation was clearly perceived to be necessary and does bring benefits. Fundamentally, and I think really important for us as a movement, it involves recogni recognition by governments that the organic approach is value for society. And that gives us a very good basis, or it should give us a very good basis on which to build. Legal definition has provided a formal basis for trade, recognising the term organic and helping define it. Protection for consumers and producers. It also enabled the inclusion of organic in agri-environment and other policy measures. It's really important here to recognise that many of the benefits that we acknowledge and research has shown that come for organic farming are not a direct result of the regulation, and much more an indirect result of the regulation. So, for example, the regulation prohibits the use of herbicides. The prohibition of the herbicides itself doesn't create the conditions for more farmland birds, but the fact that farmers have to change their practice 
to have more spring cropping and less winter cropping of cereals does create a condition to support farmland birds. So from that point of view, it's an indirect impact. But maybe it's not the role of the regulation to try to regulate every single possible way of creating benefit. But there are also risks of regulation that we need to be aware of. For me, one risk that we need to be conscious of is the risk of fossilizing current practice. It makes it much more difficult for organic farming as an idea to evolve and to develop and to improve because the changes that need to support that take longer to, to implement. But equally, I think there's a real risk that we discourage producer engagement by being too restrictive and limiting their creativity. I think it's really important to recognise that unlike most regulations in the food sector, the participation of producers is voluntary. People can choose to be organic or not. And if you make a restrict regulation too restrictive, it will discourage producers from engaging. How does the regulation deal with that relationship of, or that synergistic relationship between not using nitrogen fertilizer, using legumes to provide the nitrogen, but also benefiting pollinators? This is a crop of a population we, that we've bred uh, at the Organic Research Center. It's about emphasizing genetic diversity within a single crop, completely at variance with the traditional approach to variety breeding. It's, it covers the idea of diversity that is really important to an organic concept, but how does the regulation cope with that? Um, that help with pest control. We need habitats to encourage those in a passive uh, biological control approach. Again, how do we get those positive practices uh, recognized within an organic system? It does involve a fundamental system redesign to make the real change happen. And how do you regulate for that? It also needs to be financially viable, which some of the movements are, are trying to address, but the organic market is a really important part of making that financial viability work. I would even go so far as to say, is, is the regulation a fundamental threat to the organic idea? Is, is that the regulation, or regulation in general, um, means that the idea is being institutionalized. The ownership is being taken over by a particular institution, and it's no longer the open source citizen-owned concept um, that it originally developed. It. And what we're seeing is that new models, new alternative movements are starting to form that reject organic because of the institutionalization context. Actually, what we want to happen, do we want more fragmentation around what is otherwise a good idea? And I think the other issue is the loss of context as support for transformation of food and agriculture. That the regulation becomes an end in itself without a bigger purpose. That the organic um, system becomes an end in itself without a bigger purpose. I think we lose that sense of bigger purpose, then we lose the reason for what we're trying to do. At the same time, the market is really important to making organic and these alternative approaches viable. So the regulation, I think, is a necessary part of what we're trying to do. But what do we do with the regulation in order to make that work? Quite often when we discuss with consumers or talk to consumers about their understanding of what organic is about, it's often very um, hazy and, and unclear. And therefore, I think for consumer expectations of what organic should be, to be imposed on something where a lot of thought has gone into trying to develop the concept, I think that's a, that's a dangerous thing. I think there is a need for debate with consumers about where those compromises are and how those are understood. And for producers and food businesses, I think the regulation needs to recognize that producers, you know, one thing is remarkable is how many hundred thousand producers have been said, we are willing, because of what we believe in or, or the market we want to engage with, to open up our businesses and expose what we do to external scrutiny. Regulation needs to provide, a, in my view, a foundation to support the creativity of producers. It shouldn't be a ceiling or a prison or a straitjacket on what producers can do. What you what you want, in, in, in some respects, the, the regulation is a pass or fail system. You, you get certified or you don't get certified. But really, it's not enough for producers just to get certified and do no more. We need to think outside that box and not have it limiting the way people think about what they do. Talk about the idea that the regulation 
should also support a teacher as well as a policeman role. Um, the system redesign that's associated with conversion is a learning process. It's not that people can switch it on and off at the point that they become organic or they sign up to the regulation for the first time. They have to learn what works and doesn't work within their own individual context. How can the regulation be made to support that process? So, I think we need to um, think about rebuilding a partnership approach to the new regulation. A partnership um, between citizens and producers, uh, between businesses and government, so that the agroecological organic system idea can continue to inspire producers and consumers to engage, to integrate um, both in the sense of the, the, all the different components that make the system work and the synergies work, but also to in integrate all those different goals that society holds to be important with respect to food. It can inform thinking about future development paths for agriculture and certainly help influence the process of change that's taking place in order that we can bring about the transformation of European and global agriculture to a more sustainable world. Thank you for listening. Stand with the regulation process at the moment, but getting a little bit a step away, like Nick did very nicely, from that process itself to also think about how can we further foster organic development, how can we make sure that the, the tool of regulation is actually something that helps developing, uh, and what do we need to do next, and how do the process look like.